Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Mr. Dillon. Uh-huh. For this time of year, you just couldn't ask for no better weather. <laughs> By golly, even the horses like it. I think they're more interested in that water trough than they are in the weather, Chester. Oh, there's old Buffalo Mary filling her wash bucket. I sure hope she ain't stirred up all the sludge off the bottom. A uh, sludge doesn't bother the horses. Well, it does me. It's warm enough this morning, I figured I might wash up a little. You know, you've been saying that every morning for two weeks until you find out how cold the water is. I know, but I got my courage up better today. Yeah, sure. Now, morning, Mary. Morning, Miss Mary. Come on, Sheriff. Mr. Proudfoot, I didn't hear you at all. Reckon my faculties are starting to go. No, you were just too busy, that's all. <clears throat> Doggone if that water ain't still pretty cold. Yeah, I figured it would be. How's the world been treating you, Mary? I reckon I don't see much of the world, Marshal. Except in this dirty clothes. Yeah. I got the same feeling sometimes. Are you, uh, keeping busy, are you? Uh, to tell you the truth, Marshal, if the day was two hours longer, I'd still be short of time. Oh, it's not so. Yeah, if it ain't washing the line and it's packing water for the tub. Cutting firewood to heat them. Oh, it's a tired for a night. Sometimes I could just drop right in my track. Yeah, I know what you mean. I've been aiming to come by the jail and get them shirts of yours for the past two days. Now, I'll do it right now, Marshal. I'll leave my buckets here. Oh, no, 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 Mary. Chester can drop them off this afternoon sometime. Yeah, would be kind of a help. If, if it ain't too much trouble. Oh, no, it ain't no trouble at all, Miss Mary. Oh, that's mighty kind of you, Mr. Proudfoot. Oh, I'm glad to do it. Truth is, I'm... Well, I'm a little put out today. Piece of bad luck, as you might say. Well, I'm much obliged to you. It's as good as done, man. What uh, kind of bad luck, Mary? Oh, nothing at all, Marshal. I wouldn't even bother your mind with it. Has that uh, bruise on your jaw and that black eye got anything to do with it? I'd, r- I'd rather you just forget I said anything, Marshal. What happened, Mary? He said he'd come back and do for me if I was to tell. Well, for the land's Who sake. Who said he'd come back and do for you? It is Reb Sutter. Well, that... No count bully's been in more mean than you can shake a stick at. Why did he do it, Mary? What reason did he have? It was my savings, Marshal. Oh, my great. I had him buried in my cabin, and I wouldn't tell him where. But he made me tell him before he was through. It took me two years, $48, ever since I got. I declare he ought to be hung. Oh, I wasn't going to say nothing, Marshal. Even if he hadn't threatened me. I want Eamon to put you to no bother. It's not me who's going to be bothered, Mary. Oh, it ain't like it was something big and important. It's big. It's important. And by the time I get through with him, Reb Sutter's going to realize it. Uh, 
fellow sure has a dog done at its luck, Mr. Dillon. We'll find him. And I think he can take an old Buffalo Mary saving as hard as she works. For... My blood just starts to froth up. Matt? Huh? Oh, Miss Kitty. Uh, Matt. Hello, Kitty. I've been looking all over for you. Oh? Uh-huh. There's a job for you in the Long Branch. Oh, it's the trouble. We got one of those mean ones tonight. Drinking too much, pushing people around. Trying to get a fight started. All right, I'll go have a look. Who is it? Uh, Reb Sutter. Reb Sutter? Yeah. Well, we've found him, Chester. Come on. Yeah, I'm afraid so. He managed to hit almost every saloon in town. Two years of hard work. And he drunk it all up in one day. Well, he's going to jail for it, Mary, if that's any satisfaction. Well... Judge Bent says the case against him is solid. He hasn't got a chance of getting off. Seems like there ought to be a better way somehow. Something that's got more justice in it. I mean... Him going to jail ain't going to get me my money back. Well, you may be right, Mary, but... Oh, I'm sorry, Mary, but I guess that's about all I can say. Oh, oh, I ain't blaming you none, Marsha. I'm mighty obliged and grateful to you for letting more important things stand by while you took time to help with nobody like me. No, Mary, don't... Oh, I mean it, Marsha. It was mighty good of you. 
And you too, Mr. Proudfoot. Oh, well, I, I, I'm glad to do what I could, Miss Mary. I was... I'll be getting on now. I'll have your shirt for you, too. There's no hurry. Well, good night, all. Good night, good night. Doggone if she ain't right, Mr. Dillon. Just sending Reb Sutter to prison ain't going to help her none. Something harder ought to be done about it. Just as something is going to be done first thing in the morning. That confounded chair one more time. So help me, I'm just. You, you mean like this? Like a blast? Oh, darn you, Chester. <laughs> you mean that little noise like that's enough to get you all back in? A little noise like that's enough for me to cut your throat if you keep it up. Mm, well, you've got bad nerves, Doc. Uh, Old Chief Thunderbull makes up a kind of a tonic they say is supposed to cure that. Old Chief Thunderbull doesn't know no more about medicine than you. A bad nerve in a tonic. A lot of people get it from him and take it directly. Right a lot of people are fools, too. I don't know. They claim it does them good. Oh, look at Chester. My nerves are all right, and that tonic of thunder bulls is 60% hogwash and 60% rot gut whiskey. Well, now, look here. You can't have no 120% and nothing. No, I can have 100,000% of a winner. Well, I'm just shifting my weight. Then uh, don't shift it. Leave it where it is. Uh, folks who take that tonic regular don't stir up no big rookies just because somebody happens to lean back in their chair once in a while. Folks who take that tonic are dead from the neck up before they take it and from the neck down after. Well, how are you, Doc? Anything out of the ordinary, Chester? No, sir. Not a thing, Mr. Dillon. Except I was beginning to figure you were going to spend the whole day over there at Judge Bent. Yeah, what are you up to now, man? Just playing fast and loose with the law, are you? No, not according to the way the judge sees it. Uh, Chester, hmm? go get Reb Sutter out of his cell, will you? Yes, sir. Oh, Chester. Oh, the doctor man can't get out of the chair without squeaking his thumb, can he? Oh, I I never see it. The gold done to do or a picky in his little old noise. Oh. oh. Thunderbolt tonic. Bad nerves. Oh. <laughs> you, uh, kind of on the prod today? I right? am not on the prod. You know, sometimes a person's blood gets thick during the wintertime and come spring, he needs a, a, well, a good tonic. Matt, right? I... Matt, I... Yeah. I'm getting up out of this chair, Matt. I'm going to walk slowly and carefully to the door. I'm not going to lose my temper. I'm going to keep my voice down. I'm going to open the door, step outside, and say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Doc. <laughs> oh, did the doctor leave? Yeah, he just left. Sir. Oh, come on in, Sutter. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Whatever you say, Marshal. Grab, you've had two days in the jail cell to think it over. You probably realize how things stand against you, don't you? Mm-hmm. Being good, I reckon. Now, if you go to trial, you're going to be convicted. There's no doubt about it. I kind of figured that, Marshal. The least sentence you'll get off with is two years, and it may run to well, five or seven. Unless we can work something out. What do you mean? A sentence to the penitentiary will satisfy the law, but it won't help Buffalo Mary very much. Now, you stole $48 from her, and you spent it. Well, can't pay it back to her, Marshal. I ain't got one red cent to my name. I know that. But you have got a good, strong back, though. What's that got to do with it? Judge Bent can postpone your trial and leave you in my custody for the time being. What are you saying, Marshal? Now, if you agree, we can work it out this way. First thing every morning, you'll pack enough water over to Mary's place to run her for the day. 
So then you'll spend the rest of the day cutting firewood and stacking it behind her cabin. Now you'll sleep in your cell and you'll be fed at the jail table. How's the sound to you? How long did I have to do it, Marshal? Well, let's say until everybody agrees that you've done enough. What happens then? If you stick to it and play square, the case will be dismissed. Yeah, but now, Mr. Dillon, if you turn him out to pack water and carry wood, he'll run off. I don't think he will, Chester. You're right, Marshal. I ain't gonna run away. You see, I... I've been doing a lot of thinking these last two days. It ain't nice to know the only reason people know your name is because you beat up an old woman. There's other things, too, Marshal. I don't have to tell you that. Oh, what do you say? Where's the wood pile? Before old Mary come down the street there, Mr. Jones. Oh, is that so? Coming here, looks like. I haven't got anything for her. I thought she was supposed to pick up those shirts tomorrow. She might have forgot what day it is. Ah, good morning, Mary. Come on in. I ain't upset nothing important, am I? No, of course not. Nothing but a morning cup of coffee. Would you like to have one? Oh, well, much obliged, Marshal, but I don't have mine. Yeah. How are things going, Mary? Is Red keeping at it steady? Well, that's what I come to see you about. Oh? I'd never have believed it, Marshal, but that boy's just been a working fool. <laughs> Maybe he sees the devil over his shoulder. Well, in these <laughs> two months, I've been able to take extra work enough to save $56 well, already. Well, that's good. And that's not good. only that, he's got enough wood stacked up over at my place to last me for the next three years. That's what I wanted to see you about, Marshal. I told him that He's filled his bargain now that he could quit. But he keeps on the working. Uh, maybe you should tell him. Hmm. You know, there's a funny thing about justice, Mary. Sometimes it's all bound up with a person's conscience. Uh, I guess I don't quite understand, Marshal. Well, I think in this case it's... Reb has to feel that he's paid his debt not only to you, but to a lot of other people, too. So let's let things go on for a while, huh? Now just wait till Reb comes to us and says he's ready to quit. Norman McDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Villain, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another story of the Western Frontier. When Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke. Over to CBS Radio.